what's happening guys happy sunday um excuse the backdrop i am filming this from my bedroom um only because i've literally just got back from holiday today um it was our first family holiday uh since the little one's been born so we went to portugal for a few days uh back today and i'm just in this intro video so that i can get this video uploaded tonight um so this is slightly different than what you guys have been used to me filming it's not a breakdown video it's not a how-to video it's actually an installation video so I did this job literally two days before I flew out uh, with my good friend D from the DC group. Um, we took out an old open vent cylinder and replaced it with a thermal stool. Uh, so I'm just going to show you how we did the installation and at the end I'll do a quick description of, of what my understanding is of how a thermal stool works. Um, if there's any questions or comments you guys have, please drop a comment below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you don't like the video, give it a thumbs down what can i say i'm doing my best here uh but if you are watching you do like my stuff and you're not subscribed please do subscribe guys because it really helps me out um i'm going to be trying to get more videos out this year well this half of the year uh, i know i've been a little bit slow in the beginning of beginning of half of this year but i'm going to try and get more content out for you guys so hope you guys enjoy it and uh don't forget to subscribe thanks a lot right so today's job we've got this elson tank so it's one of those square cylinders sat on a frame. So we're going to move the washing machine out of the way. Uh, this is all going to come out and we're going to be replacing this with a thermal stool. Uh, the reason why we're going with a the thermal stool is because for an invented cylinder, we'd have to then look at running a discharge, etc. Um, I know we've got a discharge point there that we could tee into, but a thermal stool is probably still going to be a slightly easier option. Uh, we haven't got to worry about space for expansion vessel or an overflow or anything like that. Um, and you're still going to get mains pressure delivery. So, yep, we're going to start stripping this all out and popping the new cylinder in. So I'm close inspection of these immersions. It looks like someone's had a go at trying to do a, a bodge repair on these. So it looks like the immersion's actually been leaking. Um, and instead of actually trying to fix it properly, they've just squeezed a whole load of silicon in there. Bottom one, no silicon, but you can see signs of scale and stuff around it. You know, there you can see it's been leaking. So, yeah, I think these are about 10 years old now, so it's about time to start changing them out. So, yeah, it could have gone for an invented or a thermal store. Um, either one will be finding these properties. So, yeah, we're just going to start draining this one down and then see how we get on. All right, so D's just disconnecting the immersion. So, we've marked up the cable's boost and the off peak. Um, so, we're going to be using the same timer for it. Uh, once we put the new one on, uh, might have to do a bit of jiggery pokery with the wiring because there's only a single socket there. We need to have another supply um, for the actual uh, thermal store itself because it's got a PCB and a pump on it. So we'll probably have to change that to a double socket. I've got the other cables coming to the immersion from there. So those should be all, all right to just use the same ones because that's going to be going into the timer and then coming back out again. So we should be all right with that. We'll probably just have to change that over. Right, so this drain off is really giving us problems because it's only trickling out and we've got 180 litres to drain out. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm literally just going to wind out this um, drain off altogether. I'll put a half inch mail line with a bit of copper and hose pipe straight onto it. Got the bucket ready to catch some water, got the wet vac ready. So we're just literally just going to jump this with a mail line and hopefully that will help it drain out quicker. What <laughs>
what we want. Right, let's try and get this off. Put it down onto the water first. You know, I don't know if you've got to be careful with the drain valve there. Yeah, look, that's it. Yeah, so we're going to have to sort of lift it up. Up and over. And up and over. So I tip it back. And that's it. Ready? Got it? Yep. Right, bring it down. Up. Right. We didn't think about it, did we? Nah. How? We're both stuck. No, that's right. Look, slide it towards me. And you should be able to squeeze that out of there. Right. Now, what are you going to do? If you go back there, yeah. lift it, I'll lift it from here and push it back down here. What? On the floor? On yeah. the floor, yeah. You can get right. on the floor. Right, I'll, I'll put it in the space here. Jump on that thing. Huh? Jump on that I don't thing. need to jump on it. I've got enough space here. And I've got, I can rip this from here as well. Ready? Yep. Watch your hands. Yep. All right. Yep, that's down. Sweet. Cool. All right, let's get the trolley Hello. and get this out. Yeah. All right, so update. We've got the cylinder in position uh, in terms of where we want it. Just moved it out the way uh, just so we can get the brackets in at the back because this one we're gonna have to put a platform on it because it's got the tank that goes above it uh hot and cold isos are on there clips are all put in there we need to bring a cold feed off of there to go into the manual fill and then down here we need to tee off for another cold feed bring it around the back of the cylinder and over here and put washing machine valve on it um because the washing machine is going to go back in and then hot is literally just going to come straight down bang into the bottom of there so just gonna go and grab some food and then crack on with this. Right, well, a little progress update. So cold water's back on. We've got our uh, fuel tank up there with a manual fuel valve uh, just made up there. I'm just gonna make another uh, drawer for the cold water because the washing machine's gonna go in front here. So I'm just gonna bring this line round, put washing machine valve on the end of there because the cylinder's gonna go in this corner. So we'll get all that pipe work done, then put the cylinder back into position and then we literally just got to bring the hot and cold down from there and then into the cylinder. Right, so the cold main pipe work is all done down to there. We've teed off for the washing machine supply there. We've got a little manual fill that, I know it's not straight, so let's see if I can pop that down a little bit afterwards and clip it in. Um, so now we are gonna move the cylinder into position there um, and then just basically just pipe up the hot and colds, pop the washing machine back in, feed the drain hose back into there and then we should be done. Right, there we have it. The thermal store is all done. Um, now, for those of you who don't know, uh, the way this works is different to an invented cylinder and it's an ideal scenario where you haven't got space to run your D1, D2 discharge, or you might not have the correct flow rate in order to put in an unvented. Um, it works in a very simple way. So you've got your cold feed, which comes down and then goes through this trainer into this plate, uh, just like a combi boiler. So cold water goes into this plate, comes out of here. You've got a flow, uh, flow turbine or flow sensor there. So as it's flowing through, that tells this pump to kick in and then that comes out hot. Now, the way that this gets heated is that this cylinder is basically just going to be full of hot water. The water in the cylinder doesn't go anywhere. It stays in there. That's why you have a manual fill and a vent there so that you just need to top it up. If, you know, for whatever reason, uh, if the water gets too hot and it evaporates out the vent pipe or anything like that, then you can just fill it up with there. You've got your fill level on there. So that tank is full at the moment. So that's what's providing the head, head height of there. Uh, now, when there is a demand, this pump here will basically start spinning and what it will do, it will pull the hot water from there going through the plate and then returning back into the bottom. So what it does, it takes the hot water from here, that heats up this plate and then that's what then transfers the heat to the domestic side, just like a normal plate heat exchanger in a combi boiler and that gives you your hot water delivery at all your tap outlets. The benefit of this is you're still going to get your mains pressure hot water at your tap outlets um, but you haven't got the hassle of having to put like a combination valve, pressure reducing valve, PRV, expansion relief valve, expansion vessel, none of that. This doesn't even need any servicing either. It's literally just two immersions, boost, 
um, and your off-peak one, and you need another power supply just for the PCB on there, which powers the pump. That is literally it. And two connections, cold in, hot out. Um, and then you just do your other little bits for the fill. And other than that, it's a very, very simple to use uh, option. And it's easy to pipe up as well.